Hi. So in this video, I want to talk about how we sometimes loop in Python. And especially when we're interested in just repeating code n number of times without really caring about the actual loop variable. So in Python, of course, we do not have the same for loop construct as languages like C or Java. We really can only iterate over iterables using iterators. So to run a loop n times, we basically often use something like this. We'll say for i in range 10, and then we'll print something. And here I'm not, you'll see, I'm not using the i variable, right? I just want to repeat printing this loop 10 times. I don't care about what i is. So it works perfectly fine. Now it is customary to use a underscore for the variable name to indicate that we don't care about the loop variable. So we might end up writing it like this. And this is purely a convention. So we get the same result, right? Now there's nothing special about the underscore here. It is simply a convention that most Python developers will use to indicate to humans reading our code that we don't actually care about the loop variable. It's just a hint saying, hey, I'm looping 10 times. I don't actually care what the loop variable is. That's why we use the underscore. So this is basically probably the most common way of repeating something 10 times. We just iterate over a range object. But there is an alternative and actually a more efficient way of achieving the same thing. And that's to use the repeat function from the itertools module. So let's go ahead and import it. So I'm from itertools import repeat. And then let's go ahead and use that function. So it works kind of in the same way. The repeat function has two arguments that we can specify. One is what object do we want to repeat inside our loop? So in this case, I want to do something that's quite efficient. I don't want to create a new object every time. I'm just going to use the singleton none object. And then how many times do you want this to repeat? So basically repeat will give you an iterator that's going to produce this first argument this number of times. And so you can loop through that iterator. So we can do the same thing before. We can just print loop like so. So we get the same result. But let's look at timings for both of these approaches. So from time it, we're going to import time it. And then we're going to create two functions to basically do the looping for us. And then we can call those functions from time it pretty easily. So we'll do a loop using the range and we'll loop n times. So we're just going to say for underscore in range n, and then I'm going to pass. I don't want to output anything. I just want to time how long it takes to loop, right? Not time what it's doing inside the loop. I don't need to time that for comparing looping with range and looping with repeat. So we'll do the same thing. So I'll copy paste this, but this is going to be using repeat. And here again, we're going to use the repeat function and we'll repeat none n times like so. So we have these two things that now we can compare. And how many times do I want those loops to iterate? Let's say it's a hundred thousand times. And now let's time it. So let's go ahead and say loop range n. And then we have our globals argument. I'm going to pass it my globals dictionary. So this way it will have access, time it will have access to the loop range function and n, which is defined in my uh, global scope. And then we're going to repeat this how many times? We're going to repeat this test, let's say a thousand times, like so. And let's time it. So as you can see, it took about 1.07 seconds. Now let's go ahead and do the same timing, but this time we're going to use repeat. And as you can see, it's actually quite a bit faster. It took 0.4 seconds. Now keep in mind that this is for doing this a thousand times and the loop is for a hundred thousand loops. So as you can see for large loops, it can start to make a difference. Now, does this mean you should always use repeat instead of range? No, of course not. And it's really up to you. For large loops, I would most likely use repeat, not necessarily. It kind of depends on whether that's what's slowing my application down. But for small loops, I'm probably not going to bother importing the edit tools module, then using the repeat. It may also cause confusion for other members of the team that I'm working on, especially if they're more entry level Python developers, they may be scratching their head. 
what is this repeat thing? Whereas if they see this regular loop of a range, they're not going to have a problem understanding that. Now, the usual caveat that I give when discussing optimizing your code is do not optimize prematurely. Write your code in the most readable manner possible, of course, without a total disregard for efficiency, but don't start optimizing your code and refactoring it until you understand where your code is slow. So if you have existing code that's using, you know, the range approach for doing loops, you know, for just a certain number of times, don't go back now and say, oh, I need to change that to repeat. No, you, you need to figure out first where your program is slow. Where are the bottlenecks? Once you've identified the bottlenecks, then you can start optimizing, right? If your application takes 10 minutes to run and you have the single loop that basically runs, let's say, 100,000 times times 1,000, what are you going to save on that 10 minutes? You're going to save half a second, right? Or, yeah, somewhere around half a second. Well, that's not worth your time to refactor that. But again, just something to bear in mind that if you really deal with a large number of loops yeah, and you don't care about the loop variable, repeat is an option that's available. That's it. Thanks for watching.